room um, during service or at any point, um, we're going to ask you to use the bathroom that's in the back, your hallelujah. So if you could just come around to the back and maybe come up the side aisle, especially if pastor's preaching, you'll come down the front. You can just come down the side aisle and go through this door. There's another door, and it's the bathroom is right to your left. Let's go through those doors. Okay, everybody got what I said? So if you have to use the bathroom today, this should be for today only, just for some temporary renovation going on. Just come down this aisle and go through these two doors here and go to your left. All right. Amen. And um, so we're going to open in God's word this morning. We also want to keep our sister working in prayer this morning. Um, she has some medical challenges. I see that she just came in through the doors. So we're going to keep her in prayer as well today. There's some medical challenges that she is facing, and we'll let her be the one to you know, make sure that she gets that chance to share with everyone at some point. Um, we want to keep her in prayer and her family in prayer as they um, work through these challenges and just um, process with the doctors different things that they can do. Amen. Yeah, so we're going to read God's word this morning, and then we will pray in, and we'll pray for Lorna as well. Amen. Amen. All right, so praise God. We're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19. Room 22. If you are able to stand, if you can stand, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And we read in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 through 22. And this is Paul speaking, he's writing to the Christian church. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win them. Win the more, excuse me, white might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews, to those who were under the law as under the law. That I might win those who were under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law towards Christ. That I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Thank you, Lord. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers of it with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your work this morning. Let's just pray this morning. And if you're standing there, one I see the daughters are here with you. I just, um, if you just want to grab a hold of Jackie, maybe you just go, go back and grab a hold of Rona's hand. We're just going to pray for her this morning. There's some sisters that want to go back and lay hands. Rona, do you want me to share or do you want to share that yourself at a different time? Stop. You can share and you might have a It's up to you because it's your news. All right, let's, let's just pray for one another. Lord God, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you for just such a faithful woman of God, Lord. Lord, all these years, Lord, we thank you that it started with a tree, that she was given a tree many decades ago, and that is what drawing her here to this church and to your body, Lord God, and we thank you for her, Lord, and right now we stand in the gap, Lord, we know what the doctors are saying, and Lord, it is not a good diagnosis, but God, we know a God in heaven who heals who heals minds, who heals hearts, who heals bodies, Lord. We know a God that is our, we know someone who is our great physician, Lord, and we know that the doctor's words are never final. So we just pray for a mighty miracle, Lord. And we pray right now that you just strengthen her, that you touch that body, Lord, that you just touch her mind, Lord God, that you be with her family, Lord God, as they process through these things, Lord God. And we just pray for a miracle. We pray that you would just intervene, Lord God. And that, Lord, we know that there's nothing you bring us to that you won't bring us through, God. That you are faithful, God. So we just put our trust in you, God. And that you have a mighty plan involved. And even though we may not see all the details, that you are still a good, good God. And we just pray for your peace and your mercy and your grace for this family, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We thank you, Lord, for what you can do, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what God. Jesus, we thank you. Lord God, we also just pray for our service today, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that, that you would speak mightily to us today, that you would use Pastor Jim with the word on his heart today, Lord, that he would be able to share your word and that it would be clear and that it would be focused. And we thank you that Paul is telling us that he became like other people so that he could draw them to you, Lord God. 
It wasn't that he changed his theology. It was that he became like them in a way that they could relate to him. Paul was relatable, Lord. So I just pray for us this morning, Lord God, as we worship you, as everything we do, Lord God, as we partake in communion this day, Lord God, that it would just bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, I see some young ladies in the back, some, uh, some teens. Come on up here and get in the front. All Amen. of them. Yeah. Everybody sitting down now. I see you sitting down. Come on up, follow faith. <laughs> come on up to the front. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sit up front. Sit up front. That's where we want. Thank you. Hey, listen, I have something special for you today. Chuck. And his daughter Ashley are going to start our worship service out. Amen? With a couple of oldies that are, I mean, it's to, we're going to put them on the screen of this little light of mine and, and just, uh, just, I can't wait, okay? So thank you so much. And let's give them a hand. Amen?
safe places and dare to believe. I know you'll follow me no matter what, but I want victory for you. I want you to walk in health and strength and healing and all the fullness of the new covenant. The safe places keep you in the place you're in. Come out of your safe places and dare to believe me. For I never lie. I never let you down. Come out and dare to believe. Just saying it. We're not just 
in the church and we really are welcome here. And we are welcome in our lives to do anything you want. And Lord, I know there are folks in this room who can't pray yet. Can you bring them to the place where they can trust you enough to say, go ahead, God, do whatever you want? That's going to be a safe place. Lord, we choose to trust you. And God, we know that now that the building's being worked on, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. We're scrambling to do things and get the work. But God, keep us strong, courageous, focused, because Lord, we are with you. We locked arms with you and say, take us. Take us where you're taking us. We are coming. And we will do everything in our power to make that happen as long as you do it. And so God, we say thank you for being here. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for ministering to us with the songs. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to minister continually during the rest of the service. Lord, let us never take you for granted that that's just God. Because God, you are the most important thing in our lives. And so we just say thanks again and commit the rest of our time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, you're very clear that it's our requirement to give our tithes and offerings. Lord, we don't see it as a requirement. We see it as a gift of love. Lord, we owe you everything. You give us the ability to work. You give us the ability to breathe. And so, God, as we put our hands in these bags, just be blessed by the hearts behind that hand. Lord, we love you. It is our pleasure to give to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we're taking the offering, uh, we've been talking about the spiritual enriching hour, and we did take the summer off in a little bit. 
uh, because that was suggested and we thought that was a good idea. Uh, we can, the last Sunday of this month, which is three weeks from today, we will be getting our spiritual enrichment hour. Amen. And we we've changed the time from 9 to 9.30. You know, for those of you who live far away, perhaps, that's not why we changed the time. Those of us who do live far away appreciate it, though. Um, but we're starting at 9.30 instead of 9, so we just felt it would be easier on folks to get out of the house. And it went from 9.30 to about 10.20 giving folks time to uh, just use the restroom if they need to or have a time of prayer, et cetera. So three weeks from this Sunday, we will begin. Uh, the one class will just be for our leaders, and our leaders already know about that. Uh, we met with them yesterday and spoke to them about that. The other class is called What We Believe and Why. This is a class where you will have our opportunity to understand things such as baptism in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, what about the Trinity, um, the rapture, all those kinds of things that you may want to know more about, that's what this class is for. Okay, it's what we believe and why, and it will be the other class that we'll be teaching. So what I have here is just a, um, yeah. a sign-up sheet for that class, and we'll put one on each side. If you would like to attend that class, just sign up, give your cell phone number, and on the side, it's either Sunday or Wednesday. Uh, we are trying to be sensitive for folks who cannot come Sunday morning, so we're also going to offer this class Wednesday night. And just to make a little check of what will be best for you, if either, you can check both. Okay, so that will help us determine how we will, how we will do this. Um, at this time, I'm going to hand these out, but uh, as we said at the beginning, uh, our sister Barbara uh, had uh, a particular diagnosis that she would like to share with you. Here at City Limits, we feel like we're a family. Right. And so uh, we, we want for them to just share what is happening so we can all pray. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say I feel so loved here. And
you need to book that and figure out your roommates in the next week. Because once that week is up, if the hotel is holding those rooms for us, they will get their lease back to everybody that would like a room. So we need to make sure we have our rooms, make sure you have your roommates. If you have not figured that out yet, you need to make sure you speak to me like, immediately or speak to Lisa so we can figure that out and help you, okay? Because once these rooms are, they're, they're going to sell out, so we want to make sure that we have our rooms, okay? All right, so see me after service if you need that information, and I think that's all of our announcements that are currently pending. Pastor Jim, send it over to you. Thousands got saved, or right or wrong. 
Am I right or wrong? And we all think, well, that's the perfect church. That's, that's, that's what we want to model. That's what God made. That, that's the model God gave us. And yes, it is. It was the birthday of the church. It's what it should look like. It should be focused on people, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from, no matter, no matter where they come from, and no matter what they speak. But well, you notice that in three chapters, Ananias and Sapphira start lying to the Holy Spirit. Anybody ever notice that? Well, how quickly we turn from from like 3,000 are saved and many were added and daily were added to the number of those that were being saved. Then we have Ananias and Sapphira lying to the Holy Spirit and it seems to put a black mark or a smirch on the baby church. Anybody follow me? It seems like that quick it grew up and that quick it started falling. And I want to ask you, <clears throat> I want you to put your... I want you to put your spiritual Holy Ghost, listen to me, cap on, and think of why. What would cause that kind of a dramatic change? What would cause a church that is on fire, a church that has obviously got a purpose in mind, a church that is obviously on target with exactly what God and the Holy Spirit want and with what Jesus preached and taught, how could they have gone awry and gone away so quickly. Anybody follow me? Amen. Stay with me. I believe that we need to, <clears throat> excuse my throat, we need to recast our vision. I'm loving that I see like, wow, a lot more cheerful today. Man, I am happy that I'm a pig in a mud puddle and I'm from Philly, so I don't even know what that means. Right? <laughs> Right? But, but if I could, if I were from the South, I would say, tie me to an anthill and sprinkle me with honey, but, which I don't know either, but, but that's what, what comes to my mind, right? You didn't laugh at that, Lewis, but that's all right. I mean, you're ready. Like this, this, are you following me? Amen. So then what happens to a church? What should the church be focused on? What are we focused on? Have we changed? Have we modified? Have we compromised a little? Has this world gotten to us? Has this world changed us a bit? <clears throat> Let's take a look at the word and see what happens. First of all, I want to take you to our friend Jacob. And Jacob is wrestling with the Lord all night. He's wrestling with the Lord. And he finally realizes he can't win. And by the way, one of the things I say... If you ever want to know, if you walk too perfect around me, you can bank on it 100%. I don't trust you. <laughs> Listen to me. You can look me in the eye if you want. You walk too perfect around me. You act too righteous. I don't trust you. There's the reason. It's scriptural. You never trust a man without a man. You follow me? God says, I know you're going to love me. But I gotta make you, I gotta make you live a little bit because yeah, you really fall short in some areas. But why? Because Romans 3 tells you, none is righteous, no, not one. So stop judging people. Unless you're bending down to lift them up, don't look down on them at all. Somebody say amen. So God's word says that if you could take me forward, I'm gonna be going from uh from 16 to 19, if you could follow me there, Janet, thank you. So when Jacob, he awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. Anybody see that? Yeah. <laughs> he was saying, it is obvious to me that God was in this place. But I never ever noticed that. I never noticed this. I read this at least 150 times. I like the verse. I like the story. I like the verse. I, I, I preached on it, but I never know. I never ever noticed this. Look at this. So when he awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. <laughs> Come on now, somebody. Come on, let that sink in. God was here. And I didn't even know. I was right in the presence of God, and I did not know it. Now you think if that could happen to him, could that happen to me and you? 
could it be that we could play our religious thing and come to church and God moved and, and nothing ever happened to you? Could it be? Answer yes or no. It's possible, right? Look at what he said. Surely, God, God was in this place. Surely, the Lord was in this place. And I was not aware. That broke my heart. I thought, wow. I thought, for sure, man, you pop my hip, you make me limp and everything. I, I mean, surely somebody did this to me, but, but he wasn't even aware of it. But then he did get aware of it. So take me forward, please, a little bit. He was afraid and said, he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? Now he realized that, wow, something, something supernatural, something spiritual, something way beyond me, something bigger than me happened in this place. I was afraid. He said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, Bethel, which is in Hebrew of Bethel, means the house of God. Amen? Amen. <coughs> This is the gate of heaven. Put that down. Let me repeat over you. This is the gate of heaven. Guess what? This is the gate of heaven. You are the bridge and the gate of heaven. Is anybody here following me? You are the only way that that community if you and I fail in our mission to glorify Jesus, lift up that cross, they're not going to have a way in. They're not going to know because we are the bridge. We are the gate. We are like a doorway into heaven. If people want to see God, they need to see Christ-like people, right? Yeah. Wow, man, I want some of what you got, Henry. Wow, man, he's happy. Wow, man, I want some of what you got, Jeremy. Peace in your mind. I want some of that. I want some of what you got, Lisa. Right? I got to see people because people can see what they won't believe. And it's obvious that he was in the presence of God and didn't even know it. Wow. All right or wrong, you follow me? Say with me today. This, 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 this is a little deep, but just. <clears throat> so early in the next morning, Jacob took. <clears throat> a stone that he had placed under his head uh, and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. Man, there you go. Anybody follow me? You realize, wow, this is a place. It was called Luz. Luz in Latin is light. Like Luz, L-U-Z. But light is called, it's called Luz. But he named it Bethel, house of God. And, and he took the stone that he had laid on his head and he laid it right in the corner there. And then he poured oil on it, knowing that, listen to me, the anointing has got to be on. And church, I got to tell you something. Many of us, I mentioned the anointing. I mentioned the Holy Spirit. I mentioned speaking in tongues. I mentioned the third person of the Trinity. And I see your eyes blaze over and you get scared thinking, oh my God, I wonder what doctrine is coming down now. What's he going to talk about? But I got to tell you, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we have nothing. Nothing. I'm going to prove it to you today. If you want to see every single seat in this place filled on Sunday and people waiting outside, we got to get in tune like we did this morning with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Young team. 
can't talk to your children. Because I'm going to be taking walks to the back. I may start preaching from back Amen. Amen. You cannot hide from me in the back of the sanctuary. Those days are over. Amen. I'm back. Amen. My hands are on the shorts and legs. <laughs> Somebody please, please underline 
God you got that in your Bible. Save yourself from this corrupt generation. And this is where we've been tweaking our church. Some of the leaders have been on already in the Sunday school class in our Richmond hour. That's going to be about it. I want to retrain our faith, including mine. Hello. I didn't arrive and say, wow, I've got revelation. I will share this with you. <laughs> God showed me something. Come on, let's all do it. Thank you. 
and love with him to share the drum stuff, the drum girl stuff. But it is time for all that. We could throw stuff, the drum in a river now at people's houses with grab it and, and just write, you follow me? Yeah. And they begin to compromise this. That first church compromise, it, it starts to bend this and say, hey, let's just leave that out and then let's just, let's massage this, let's not talk about this at all and, and, and let's not talk about that, right? Are you ready for heaven? Amen. For years, I was scared that I'd go to Ephesians and I knew where my dad stopped. <laughs> Because after that says, and you wives, be subject to your husbands. Amen. Be subject to your husbands. Yes. Wow. Be obedient to them. Wow. And I thought, I don't even want to get into that one. <laughs> there's enough of the woman here to scrub going on. <laughs> Until I read on and I matured and I thought, like Christ loved the church. Amen. You love her like Christ loved the church. And seven times it tells you, love her like Jesus loved the church. Love her like Jesus would give her life for her. Love her like Jesus would do anything. Love her like Jesus would forgive her. She could fall 20 times. He said, forgive you, honey. Get back up. Come on. Come on. He forgive her. Forgive her. Forgive her. Love her. Love her. Love her. Love her. Love her. Like Christ did the church. Why? You find me a woman who wouldn't love a man who would say, listen, I love you with an everlasting love. It doesn't matter what you do. After I put that ring on your finger, I am yours and you are mine, and I will be with you till the end of the, until the end of everything. Amen. And then I realized, wow, why be scared to even go? I got stay away from Ephesians 5. Be obedient, women be obedient. I'm like, can you imagine how many pastors are scared when we massage the word? Oh, we'll stay away from you, you know, mm, too confusing, you know. My people are too dumb, they never understand this could be going here. Isn't that horrible? Yeah. Or churches that compromise they just like, well, oh, let me just bend it around. Our guy with the big blow, what's his name? Uh, Joel, uh, whatever. <laughs> big blow. Now he's doing all kinds of ecumenical services. It's just anybody coming because it's all about anybody. Just just everybody can because Jesus loves you all. <laughs> right? Sin is sin. Yes. So the other extreme is that we say, sin is sin. And, 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 and just, we all want y'all here. <laughs> this is the gateway. We don't want you here. If you, you don't believe like we believe, we don't want really? Then who are you going to get through to heaven? Just you apparently and half of y'all backslidden anyway. <laughs> Service pastor's got some things in the back that are sucking up all the air. I found out if you're backslidden, it'll suck the sin right out of you. <laughs> they're like big giant, they're, they're like sucking sin out of the wall, like I crying, cheating, stealing a hundred years of people with a curse for us. They're just sucking stuff away, man. Okay, I'm gonna spend a couple hours back there just between the four machines. Just, just, The second church is the church of isolation and irrelevance. I don't need to know what's going on in the world because I'm not from the world. I don't need to know about it. You need to know what's out there. I don't care what new sin, what new drugs, what ball out or whatever they're taking I don't need to know all that because I'm not, I'm not of that. So why not be a part of that church? I want no part of that world. Why not be a part of that, right? You ready? Buckle up. God has not called us to conform to a worldly system, but to transform us. He called us to transform that. Think there's no way we can win. Yes, we can. 
God never said, listen, I'm going to send you into a place to do something that's completely impossible for you to do. He didn't say that at all. He said, I'm giving you power and might to do everything that you need. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You just proclaim. I think it's that we, we have taken things away. Watch this. Church number one. I, I just want to get people in and just hospitality. Come on, that's a bit so glad. So you're more toasted than a box of cornflakes and that is more screwy and neat. More cups to make a full set of six and just whatever. I'm sorry. And, just, and here's what we do. I, I bought my illustration because, because I love them just so. I want to be about people. Come on, don't you? When you get people in the pews, be about people. My heart is about the relationships. And just have dinners and then fireflies and marshmallows and all the good things. Talk about our grandkids. Show pictures. Let's do a little Facebook thing or something like that. Let's take selfies together. Let's go to parks together. Let's, let's be friends. That cool. That's that one church. That leaves out this whole vertical relationship. This is one that goes right to God. Matter of fact, some people think this hinges on this. It doesn't. This hinges on the Holy Spirit of God.
I'll see the preach by itself. It, it really doesn't need me. I'll just be here just to be their talking head. But I want to I want to end this morning with this one piece right here. John 1 14. I want to prove this to you. I want to prove it to you. So the word. He became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, Father full of grace and truth. Amen. Did he come only to preach Jesus? Or did he come to a manger to be with men? Didn't matter who they were. Right or wrong. If we become a church that's us for no more, we're like, mm, you know, Pastor Jim, I need to tell you, that guy's a crackhead. Really? How do you know? Smoke crack with him. Both y'all get the hell out. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I say another word that I did? I, I can show you, it says Hades and Hell in the Bible. Yeah. Oh, 
for us. That in times that we do, we are truly come to you. The ultimate sacrifice and the ultimate expression of love to lay your life down for us. On the night that Jesus <clears throat> was to be uh, betrayed, <coughs> it says that he took bread. And when he had thanked God, he, he broke it. And he said that this is my body that was broken for you. Do this every time that you remember me. Let's pray for him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you let them beat you and whip you and hurt you and shame you. Everything that we deserved, you took for us, God. In that broken body, that shame, God, help us, Lord, never to forget the cross, the complete cross, all of it, everything that you did for us. As Paul said, to preach Christ and him crucified. That's what I want. <clears throat> After supper, in the same way, he took the cup. He raised it, thanking the Father. He says, this is the new covenant in my blood. It's the new testament. It's the new, it's the new work. Anytime that you drink this cup and eat this bread, think of me and remember me till I return to suffer again, even with you. Partake. So let us just, just take a moment and pray. And Father, we praise you, God. We praise you that we can remember you on communion Sunday morning.
Keep them strong. Keep them yeah. healthy. I pray that you would bless them in all things, Lord God. In the precious name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.